win. Another common alternative is simply to think win. People with the win mentality don't necessarily want someone else to lose. That's irrelevant. What matters is that they get what they want. When there is no sense of contest or competition, win is probably the most common approach in everyday negotiation. A person with the win mentality thinks in terms of securing his own ends and leaving it to others to secure theirs. Which option is best? Of these five philosophies discussed so far win slash win, win slash lose, lose slash win, lose slash lose, and win which is the most effective? The answer is, it depends. If you win a football game, that means the other team loses. If you work in a regional office that is miles away from another regional office, and you don't have any functional relationship between the offices, you may want to compete in a win slash lose situation to stimulate business. However, you would not want to set up a win slash lose situation like the race to Bermuda contest within a company or in a situation where you need cooperation among people or groups of people to achieve maximum success. If you value a relationship and the issue isn't really that important, you may want to go for lose slash win in some circumstances to genuinely affirm the other person. What I want isn't as important to me as my relationship with you. Let's do it your way this time. You might also go for lose slash win if you feel the expense of time and effort to achieve a win of any kind would violate other higher values. Maybe it just isn't worth it. There are circumstances in which you would want to win, and you wouldn't be highly concerned with the relationship of that win to others. If your child's life were in danger, for example, you might be peripherally concerned about other people and circumstances. But saving that life would be supremely important. The best choice, then, depends on reality. The challenge is to read that reality accurately and not to translate win slash lose or other scripting into every situation. Most situations, in fact, are part of an interdependent reality, and then win slash win is really the only viable alternative of the five. Win slash lose is not viable because, although I appear to win in a confrontation with you, your feelings, your attitudes toward me and our relationship have been affected. If I am a supplier to your company, for example, and I win on my terms in a particular negotiation, I may get what I want now. But will you come to me again? My short-term win will really be a long-term lose if I don't get your repeat business. So an interdependent win slash lose is really lose slash lose in the long run. If we come up with a lose slash win, you may appear to get what you want for the moment. But how will that affect my attitude about working with you, about fulfilling the contract? I may not feel as anxious to please you. I may carry battle scars with me into any future negotiations. My attitude about you and your company may be spread as I associate with others in the industry. So we're into lose slash lose again. Lose slash lose obviously isn't viable in any context. And if I focus on my own win and don't even consider your point of view, there's no basis for any kind of productive relationship. In the long run, if it isn't a win for both of us, we both lose. That's why win slash win is the only real alternative in interdependent realities. I worked with a client once, the president of a large chain of retail stores, who said, Stephen, this win slash win idea sounds good, but it is so idealistic. The tough, realistic business world isn't like that. There's win slash lose everywhere, and if you're not out there playing the game, you just can't make it. All right, I said, try going for win slash lose with your customers. Is that realistic? Well, no, he replied. Why not? I'd lose my customers. Then, go for lose slash win give the store away. Is that realistic? No. No margin, no mission. As we considered the various alternatives, win slash win appeared to be the only truly realistic approach. I guess that's true with customers, he admitted, but not with suppliers. You are the customer of the supplier, I said. Why doesn't the same principle apply? Well, we recently renegotiated our lease agreements with the mall operators and owners, he said. We went in with a win slash win attitude. We were open, reasonable, conciliatory. But they saw that position as being soft and weak, and they took us to the cleaners. Well, why did you go for lose slash win? I asked. We didn't. We went for win slash win. I thought you said they took you to the cleaners. They did. In other words, you lost. That's right. And they won. That's right. So what's that called? When he realized that what he had called win slash win was really lose slash win, he was shocked. And as we examined the long-term impact of that lose slash win, the suppressed feelings, the trampled values, 
the resentment that seethed under the surface of the relationship, we agreed that it was really a loss for both parties in the end. If this man had had a real win slash win attitude, he would have stayed longer in the communication process, listened to the mall owner more, then expressed his point of view with more courage. He would have continued in the win slash win spirit until a solution was reached they both felt good about. And that solution, that third alternative, would have been synergistic probably something neither of them had thought of on his own. Win slash win or no deal. If these individuals had not come up with a synergistic solution one that was agreeable to both they could have gone for an even higher expression of win slash win win slash win or no deal. No deal basically means that if we can't find a solution that would benefit us both, we agree to disagree agreeably no deal. No expectations have been created, no performance contracts established. I don't hire you or we don't take on a particular assignment together because it's obvious that our values are our goals are going in opposite directions. It is so much better to realize this up front instead of downstream when expectations have been created and both parties have been disillusioned. When you have no deal as an option in your mind, you feel liberated because you have no need to manipulate people, to push your own agenda, to drive for what you want. You can be open. You can really try to understand the deeper issues underlying the positions. With no deal as an option, you can honestly say, I only want to go for win slash win. I want to win, and I want you to win. I wouldn't want to get my way and have you not feel good about it, because downstream it would eventually surface and create a withdrawal. On the other hand, I don't think you would feel good if you got your way and I gave in. So let's work for a win slash win. Let's really hammer it out. And if we can't find it, then let's agree that we won't make a deal at all. It would be better not to deal than to live with a decision that wasn't right for us both. Then maybe another time we might be able to get together. Sometime after learning the concept of win slash win or no deal, the president of a small computer software company shared with me the following experience. We had developed new software which we sold on a five-year contract to a particular bank. The bank president was excited about it, but his people weren't really behind the decision. About a month later, that bank changed presidents. The new president came to me and said, I am uncomfortable with these software conversions. I have a mess on my hands. My people are all saying that they can't go through this and I really feel I just can't push it at this point in time. My own company was in deep financial trouble. I knew I had every legal right to enforce the contract. But I had become convinced of the value of the principle of win slash win. So I told him we have a contract. Your bank has secured our products and our services to convert you to this program. But we understand that you're not happy about it. So what we'd like to do is give you back the contract, give you back your deposit. And if you are ever looking for a software solution in the future, come back and see us. I literally walked away from an $84,000 contract. It was close to financial suicide. But I felt that, in the long run, if the principle were true, it would come back and pay dividends. Three months later, the new president called me. I'm now going to make changes in my data processing, he said, and I want to do business with you. He signed a contract for $240,000. Anything less than win slash win in an interdependent reality is a poor second best that will have impact in the long term relationship. The cost of that impact needs to be carefully considered. If you can't reach a true win slash win, you're very often better off to go for no deal. Win slash win or no deal provides tremendous emotional freedom in the family relationship. If family members can't agree on a video that everyone will enjoy, they can simply decide to do something else no deal rather than having some enjoy the evening at the expense of others. I have a friend whose family has been involved in singing together for several years. When they were young, she arranged the music, made the costumes, accompanied them on the piano and directed the performances. As the children grew older, their taste in music began to change and they wanted to have more say in what they performed and what they wore. They became less responsive to direction. Because she had years of experience in performing herself and felt closer to the needs of the older people at the rest homes where they planned to perform. She didn't feel that many of the ideas they were suggesting would be appropriate. At the same time, however, she recognized their need to express themselves and to be part of the decision-making process. So she set up a win slash win or no deal. She told them she wanted to arrive at an agreement that everyone felt good about or they would simply find other ways to enjoy their talents. As a result, everyone felt free to express his or her feelings and ideas as they worked to set up a win slash win agreement, knowing that whether or not they could agree, there would be no emotional strings. The win slash win or no deal approach is most realistic at the beginning of a business relationship or enterprise. 
In a continuing business relationship, no deal may not be a viable option, which can create serious problems, especially for family businesses or businesses that are begun initially on the basis of friendship. In an effort to preserve the relationship, people sometimes go on for years making one compromise after another, thinking win slash lose or lose slash win even while talking win slash win. This creates serious problems for the people and for the business, particularly if the competition operates on win slash win and synergy. Without no deal, many such businesses simply deteriorate and either fail or have to be turned over to professional managers. Experience shows that it is often better in setting up a family business or a business between friends to acknowledge the possibility of no deal downstream and to establish some kind of buy slash sell agreement so that the business can prosper without permanently damaging the relationship. Of course there are some relationships where no deal is not viable. I wouldn't abandon my child or my spouse and go for no deal, it would be better, if necessary, to go for compromise ALO form of win slash win. But in many cases, it is possible to go into negotiation with a full win slash win or no deal attitude. And the freedom in that attitude is incredible. 5 Dimensions of Win Slash Win Think win slash win is the habit of interpersonal leadership. It involves the exercise of each of the unique human endowments self-awareness, imagination, conscience, and independent will in our relationships with others. It involves mutual learning, mutual influence, mutual benefits. It takes great courage as well as consideration to create these mutual benefits, particularly if we're interacting with others who are deeply scripted in win slash lose. That is why this habit involves principles of interpersonal leadership. Effective interpersonal leadership requires the vision the proactive initiative and the security, guidance, wisdom, and power that come from principle-centered personal leadership. The principle of win slash win is fundamental to success in all our interactions, and it embraces five interdependent dimensions of life. It begins with character and moves toward relationships, out of which flow agreements. It is nurtured in an environment where structure and systems are based on win slash win. And it involves process, we cannot achieve win slash win ends with win slash lose or lose slash win means. The following diagram shows how these five dimensions relate to each other. Now let's consider each of the five dimensions in turn. Character Character is the foundation of win slash win, and everything else builds on that foundation. There are three character traits essential to the win slash win paradigm. Integrity We've already defined integrity as the value we place on ourselves. Habits 1, 2, and 3 help us develop and maintain integrity. As we clearly identify our values and proactively organize and execute around those values on a daily basis, we develop self-awareness and independent will by making and keeping meaningful promises and commitments. There's no way to go for a win in our own lives if we don't ever know, in a deep sense, what constitutes a win what is, in fact, harmonious with our innermost values. And if we can't make and keep commitments to ourselves as well as to others, our commitments become meaningless. We know it, others know it. They sense duplicity and become guarded. There's no foundation of trust and win slash win becomes an ineffective superficial technique. Integrity is the cornerstone in the foundation. Maturity. Maturity is the balance between courage and consideration. I first learned this definition of maturity in the fall of 1955 from a marvelous professor, Rin Saxanian, who instructed my control class at the Harvard Business School. He taught the finest, simplest, most practical, yet profound, definition of emotional maturity I've ever come across the ability to express one's own feelings and convictions balanced with consideration for the thoughts and feelings of others. As a part of his doctoral research, Rin Saxanian had developed this criterion over years of historical and direct field research. He later wrote up his original research format and its completeness with supportive reasoning and application suggestions in a Harvard Business Review article, January to February 1958. Even though it is complementary and also developmental, Rin's use of the word maturity is different from its use in the Seven Habits Maturity Continuum, which focuses on a growth and development process from dependency through independency to interdependency. If you examine many of the psychological tests used for hiring, promoting, and training purposes, you will find that they are designed to evaluate this kind of maturity. Whether it's called the ego strength slash empathy balance, the self-confidence slash respect for others balance, the concern for people slash concern for tasks balance, I'm okay, you're okay in transactional analysis language, or 9.1, 1.9, 5.5, 9.9, in management grid language the quality sought for is the balance of what I call courage and consideration. 
Respect for this quality is deeply ingrained in the theory of human interaction, management, and leadership. It is a deep embodiment of the P-PC balance. While courage may focus on getting the golden egg, consideration deals with the long-term welfare of other stakeholders. The basic task of leadership is to increase the standard of living and the quality of life for all stakeholders. Many people think in dichotomies, in either slash or terms. They think if you're nice, you're not tough. But win slash win is nice, and tough. It's twice as tough as win slash lose, to go for win slash win, you not only have to be nice, you have to be courageous. You not only have to be empathic, you have to be confident. You not only have to be considerate and sensitive, you have to be brave. To do that, to achieve that balance between courage and consideration, is the essence of real maturity and is fundamental to win slash win. If I'm high on courage and low on consideration, how will I think? Win slash lose. I'll be strong and ego bound. I'll have the courage of my convictions, but I won't be very considerate of yours. To compensate for my lack of internal maturity and emotional strength, I might borrow strength from my position and power, or from my credentials, my seniority, my affiliations. If I'm high on consideration and low on courage, I'll think lose slash win. I'll be so considerate of your convictions and desires that I won't have the courage to express and actualize my own. High courage and consideration are both essential to win slash win. It is the balance that is the mark of real maturity. If I have it, I can listen, I can empathically understand, but I can also courageously confront. Abundance mentality. The third character trait essential to winning word is the abundance mentality, the paradigm that there is plenty out there for everybody. Most people are deeply scripted in what I call the scarcity mentality. They see life as having only so much, as though there were only one pie out there. And if someone were to get a big piece of the pie, it would mean less for everybody else. The scarcity mentality is the zero-sum paradigm of life. People with a scarcity mentality have a very difficult time sharing recognition and credit, power or profit even with those who help in the production. They also have a very hard time being genuinely happy for the successes of other people even, and sometimes especially, members of their own family or close friends and associates. It's almost as if something is being taken from them when someone else receives special recognition or windfall gain or has remarkable success or achievement. Although they might verbally express happiness for others' success, inwardly they are eating their hearts out. Their sense of worth comes from being compared, and someone else's success, to some degree, means their failure. Only so many people can be a students, only one person can be number one. To win simply means to beat. Often, people with a scarcity mentality harbor secret hopes that others might suffer misfortune not terrible misfortune, but acceptable misfortune that would keep them in their place. They're always comparing, always competing. They give their energies to possessing things or other people in order to increase their sense of worth. They want other people to be the way they want them to be. They often want to clone them, and they surround themselves with yes people people who won't challenge them, people who are weaker than they. It's difficult for people with a scarcity mentality to be members of a complementary team. They look on differences as signs of insubordination and disloyalty. The abundance mentality, on the other hand, flows out of a deep inner sense of personal worth and security. It is the paradigm that there is plenty out there and enough to spare for everybody. It results in sharing of prestige, of recognition, of profits, of decision-making. It opens possibilities, options, alternatives, and creativity. The abundance mentality takes the personal joy, satisfaction, and fulfillment of habits 1, 2, and 3 and turns it outward, appreciating the uniqueness, the inner direction, the proactive nature of others. It recognizes the unlimited possibilities for positive interactive growth and development, creating new third alternatives. Public victory does not mean victory over other people. It means success in effective interaction that brings mutually beneficial results to everyone involved. Public victory means working together, communicating together, making things happen together that even the same people couldn't make happen by working independently. And public victory is an outgrowth of the abundance mentality paradigm. A character rich in integrity, maturity, and the abundance mentality has a genuineness that goes far beyond technique, or lack of it in human interaction.